All right, hey folks. So today I will be talking about set and rep schemes and sharing with you my set and rep scheme that I use to build strength. And also I want to discuss a bit about um, what a set and rep scheme should offer and why some of the more popular set and rep schemes now aren't actually that useful. Um, so firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments, pop them down below. And if you'd like to work with me on your own strength physique goals, there's a link in the description. So firstly, here's the eights, fives, and threes. I'm going to get on straight to eight explaining this because today I want to offer you a practical tip, practical routine, a system for increasing strength and explain to you what the benefits are using this system. So let's get straight into it. So firstly, this is what I call my eights, fives, and threes. Now, with that, you start with three sets of eight on a given exercise, all right? Three sets of eight. So that might look like this. It might look like 100 kilos for 888 on a lift. Let's say you do that for your squat. 100 kilos for 888. Now, in doing that, you're going to start to develop quite a bit of muscular endurance. The Your body's going to upregulate its glycogen stores to allow you to, to do that much work if you're not used to doing it previously. So for most strength guys, that'll be a fairly high degree of volume on the main lift. So or it could be a variation. As you guys know, I like variations. So it's 100 kilos for 888. Now, assuming you got that, next week you'll go up to 102.5. So add the least amount of weight to the bar as you can and go up to, if we go up by five pounds or two and a half kilos. And then let's assume you carry on and you get 888 again. So you've had your rest of your week of training, the other volume you've been doing, the other routine, the other exercises, all going well. And that enables you to add some weight to the bar with maintaining your reps. Great. Now, let's say at some point, you're going to get to the point where it might be the week after, it might be many weeks after that, you're eventually going to start to drop reps on your final set. Assuming you go up nice and slow, you give yourself time, you'll start to drop reps on your final set. And let's say at some point, you'll hit 886, all right, because you'll drop some reps from your final set. That is your cue to drop a set the next time, all right? So next time you'll go to this add a little bit more weight to the bar from the previous time and just completely drop that last set so your previous weight was 105 for 886 this week you're going to go open weight again to do 107.5 and you're going to do eight and eight you can go all out just to try and get eight and then eight on the bar okay so that goes well and it also provides a slight reduction in fatigue because you're doing less volume. And that reduction in fatigue should allow you to add more weight onto the bar the week after. So hopefully you'll get eight and eight, which is great. And the week after that, you might drop some reps on the final set. And again, we drop a set the next time. So that leads us to a little bit more weight on the bar and getting a set of eight. And you'll stick to that for as long as you can until eventually you will drop reps on that one set. So look at what we've done. We've gone from high volume, so three sets of eight on an exercise, particularly a, 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 perhaps a powerlifting variation, and have dropped down to just one top set. And during that time, we've slowly and continuously added weight to the bar. That's the key with this. You want to always progress forward no matter where you're at. And you want to get into the habit of continuously adding weight to the bar because that's something which I don't think is always inherent in a lot of these set and rep schemes and it's not inherent in people's thinking. They just stay at the same weight for a long time but the goal is here you're continuously moving up and up. You get to the point where it's like okay I've dropped some reps and let's say you hit 120 and you get seven reps. Okay so you're at the moment you're done for the eights and you're going to drop down to fives. So you'll go down to this fives and you'll hit a little bit more weight again, five, five, five. And the process repeats until you get down to one set of five and you drop reps, and you maybe get a four. And that's when you move down to triples, which will look like this, or the triples. So the whole the whole thing will look like this. So you'll go from eight, 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 five, 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 three, 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 three. So what's happening is you are undulating the volume up and down to facilitate higher and higher levels of strength. And then you're, every time you drop down in reps, that's a big boost because your body is used to doing higher reps. So dropping down from eights to a five means for generally quite fast progress in the fives. That's what I always used to find. I always used to find that drop from one rep scheme to the next always resulted in a big burst of strength because 
five seems so easy after doing threes for so after doing eights for so long, and then threes feel so easy after doing fives for so long. And again, the one set feels so easy after doing two sets for long. So it just goes up and down, up and down as you're getting stronger and stronger. You get a sort of catapult effect as you drop fatigue every stage of the way. So that's one, two, three, nine stages along that set and rep scheme. And by the end of it, you should be handling more weight than you were for three sets of eight. That makes sense. And if you look back at our example, we were on about 125 and we started about 100, which is pretty reasonable because about if you do 100 kilos for three sets of eight, that's about 120 or so for a triple. So for a single, so you've gained a good degree of strength. So that's how it works. Now, in terms of so in terms of how I would apply this, I would pick a large exercise variation and apply it there. And I would do this over a course of many, many months, ideally. If you're gaining weight, if, you're, if your nutrition is on point, if your rest and all that kind of stuff is on point, you should be able to use the routine for a while and carry on getting stronger. But it does a number of very important things. One is it can, first, it forces you to continuously focus on progression. Because I don't always think that's inherent with a lot of set and rep schemes. You're always pushing yourself forward, always. Like that's always the goal is to push yourself forward with the smallest increments possible. There's never a standing still. And I don't like that with strength athletes. I don't like this idea of, okay, I'm just gonna sit here for a while. Let's keep pushing up in weight because that's important. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you get a natural ebb and flow of volume and intensity over the course of the whole training block. And that's really important as well. That is allows your body to have a bit of rest and to build up for the next little run up, the next drop down. And so in general, it works out very well. This is the basis of my um, tactician booklet, which is a strength program. And you can see that link below if you want to see the whole program. But that is the base of how I work things there with the exercise variations. Now, in terms of what some of the common set and rep schemes don't give you, if we look at something like double progression, Double progression doesn't really give you that. You get a bit of undulating volume because the reps drop and then they increase again. But it's not like this, whereas the sets actually drop down as well. And then you have different volume tiers. You go from the eights to the fives and to the threes. And dynamic double progression is no better. People love dynamic double progression these days, and I'm really confused as to why. Um, it's just a, physiologically speaking, it's the same number of sets. As, it's roughly the same number of reps. So I don't really understand why people are so excited about dynamic double progression. It's Physiologically speaking, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just something that keeps people interested. And I think they get really excited about that. It's like five by fives. People get really excited about five by five and really sort of emotional about it and almost religious about being, um, about doing five by five. But it's really a very basic set and rep scheme, which doesn't offer you a great deal past the beginner stage. It doesn't offer you this undulating of ups and downs of reps and sets and reps. But there we go. I know that comment alone will probably uh, trigger a few people into trying to defend their set and rep scheme. But I'm not that interested, <laughs> but if you'd like to try something which definitely does work for strength, this is what I present to you, it's what I've been using for years, and it's very, very good. Um, so I will call it there. Hopefully you guys found that useful as a practical guide for how to increase strength, because I think this type of stuff is maybe not the most flashy, but it's super important because it's a way of progressing your strength over time consistently. And it means at least you're gonna stick to a routine for nine sessions, which is, always good, right? You'll stick to the routine if you want to get stronger. So I will call it there, guys, and I'll speak to you real soon.